hi and thanks for joining me on the Ghanaian farmer youtube channel my name is Enyonam. if this is your first time on my channel please subscribe and also share the link on this channel we bring you interviews about agriculture from agribusiness to livestock or aquaculture to anything so you can find a niche for yourself in farming today i have a special guest with me her name is sharon she's been watching my channel for some time now and she decided to come to ghana for what i don't know yet i'm going to interact with sharon so she told me her purpose for visiting ghana sharon thanks for coming mm -hmm. and you're Thank welcome you, aquaba aquaba <laughs> I don't even know what you're saying. Medase. Medase. Okay. I've learned something already. Right. Yeah. So you're welcome once again. Thank you. How long have you been following the Ghanaian Farmer channel? For about a year. For about a year. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to say I'm up to date. I just watched yesterday's mm -hmm. interview mm -hmm. with uh, the man the from Kenya, Kenya. Yeah. yeah, about yam. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting to know that in Africa, which is East Africa, they don't have yams. Yeah. So I think every region is blessed with something, something special exactly oh, okay yeah is this your first time in ghana I, I was here as a teenager but as an adult this is my first time so i will recollect every experience okay. so i can say this is my first time right yeah so you're from the uk yes I'm, but my best you and nigeria. nigeria yes okay so what are you doing in the uk um doing a phd at the U, in the uk okay. so it's agribusiness related okay. um in uh, value chain issues mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. In Nigeria, the issue we have is due to our poor standards, mm -hmm. a lot of our produce are being either banned mm -hmm. or returned, and then there's economic loss, mm -hmm. there's issues with the environment. So it's just an unending cycle when we're not able to reap the benefits of you know the abundance of agricultural produce mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. So I took it upon myself to contribute to knowledge mm -hmm. by doing my PhD um, at the University of Surrey. I took a break mm -hmm. due to COVID mm -hmm. to come and explore other avenues okay. and interests of mine right. yes. okay so how is that going i'm actually enjoying Ghana okay. right now i'm <laughs> loving it all right <laughs> yeah so um the purpose for visiting tri okay why are you in tri what is the purpose what's the drive the passion behind visiting the snail farm tri first of all you know there are so many internet gurus mm -hmm. when it comes to every topic under the sun yeah and coming through you, I think over the years you've built credibility and all the people you've interviewed, you know, we have seen or heard the level of um, qual the quality of work that they put out. And I watched um, Mr. Felix videos and I was very much impressed. And the region where I'm from in Nigeria, in Biosa, it's we eat snails. It's a uh, we're seafood people. We eat snails, isam, everything. And snail farming or snail consumption is something that I grew up eating. Okay. Also, I love K Beauty, right. the Korean beauty. I use Cosrx. I use the snail uh, mucin, the snail mucus, which is good for beauty. Mm. And some time ago, I was doing some research, and I found out that the value, the market value for, for snail, snail extraction, is four billion dollars. Wow. That's a huge market. Exactly. And I've been wondering why hasn't Africa been able to tap into that market? All we do is consume snail. Of course. But we don't even know there are other benefits in which we can add value. Mm. So just imagine in Africa, we all come together and let's say each farmer, each snail farmer, we are all extracting. And let's say at the end of the year, we're doing like a thousand tons of snail mucin. That's, that's a lot of that's money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. It creates jobs and also put money in people's pockets. According to research right. or what's on the internet, mm -hmm. which we are yet to verify, mm -hmm. one kg of snail can cost up to fifty-eight or to sixty thousand dollars per kg. Wow. Wow. And that money is seated there and people are not exploring it. Exactly. So there are so many untapped revenues in agriculture right. in africa that people are not looking to maybe it's the perception that agriculture is dirty or it's and for old people uneducated people exactly but here's a phd student <laughs> in the uk who is here in ghana to make research about snail farming <laughs> how he she can put up this facility rear her own snail extract the slime and then make some good money from it so what have you made i mean so far you visited the farm yes 
and Felix Apia, who is the CEO of Tristolus, yes. has taken you through the procedure, yeah. the training, and yeah. everything. Yeah. What's the next step for you from here? Are you going back to Nigeria or are you going back to um, okay. UK? No, I will be going back to Nigeria. Okay. And from what I understand, mm -hmm. the training is essential. Okay. Yeah. And given I travel, I have to put the right people in place who right. will be in contact with Mr. Mm -hmm. Felix. Mm -hmm. Because if the training is not there, it looks easy, but there are little details that have to be adhered exactly. to. For example, if I just walked around and say, oh, I can construct, construct this myself. That, I'll be lying to myself. Of course, of course. You know, that's I have how to... people think. Exactly. Think. And, you know, there are some people who think they're smart. They will come and just mm -hmm. say, oh, this is what he did. Mm -hmm. But there are intricacies. I'm sure it took him a long time to come up with this structure mm -hmm. and it has been proven to work. Mm -hmm. So the next step will be to find the ideal spots. Mm -hmm. And with snail farming, mm -hmm. it starts with the soil. You yeah. can't use sandy soil. No. You know, the soil has to be the right type of soil mm -hmm. for them to be able to be to to inhabit this place yeah. so i would find the right location the people who will come over for training and we'll take it up from there in you know in contact with mr felix and one thing i keep hearing from clients anytime they reach out to me via text message or phone call is yeah. and you know how long will it take for me to start getting my money mm -hmm. now from what you've heard felix told you mm -hmm. it will take as much as two years mm -hmm. for you to start getting some part of your money mm -hmm. coming back mm -hmm. you have that patience i'm very patient especially when it comes to agriculture it, okay. it, it's it's i told for me personally mm -hmm. the joy of seeing something grow mm -hmm. from seedlings mm -hmm. or from eggs mm -hmm. to fruition mm -hmm. I, I i i don't know i can't explain i think the best word will be mm -hmm. is orgasmic okay. i guess okay so i'm patient enough to know mm -hmm that the end result, what I'm going to get along the process. And for the funny part is that with snail farming, mm -hmm. you can extract the slime at different stages. Yeah. So it's not like I'm waiting blindly for two years without Before. any form right. of profit. No, mm -hmm. I would be able mm -hmm. to ha get, have some sort of profit mm -hmm. along the line. At the end of the two year process, that's when I would harvest the snails mm -hmm. again. And then the shells will be added to make feed. Yeah or you know yes whatever. and we saw the fit exactly. where he showed you yeah. how they make it through exactly. the shell and every other thing exactly now also another thing i want to find out has to do with the risk beats mm -hmm. you know every business or sector comes it's its Some own form risk. Of risk yeah and investment is risk mm -hmm. and per what we are looking at mm -hmm. it needs a lot of investment are you prepared to take that risk yes okay yes i am you're very <laughs> yes i am you're very ready yeah okay so i'm gonna leave you here mm -hmm. because i know she wants to run away <laughs> <laughs> she wants to run away then i'll be talking to felix uh about everything that they are doing here and also if you want to you know visit the farm the ways and means to reach out to him or what you should be looking at mm -hmm. but quickly before you go what do you have to tell african youth who are seeing the evidences or the benefit of agriculture mm -hmm. but i still having that attitude of i don't think this is for me i don't think i want to get my hands dirty I, i'm not ready for what you have to tell them really to be honest i feel like everyone should be involved in agriculture because everyone eats food mm. you can speak to someone they will tell you their favorite food they will tell you oh i love rice and beans mm -hmm. or i love uh, you know plantain I think everyone's interest should be picked. Right. How does this grow? What mm. does it take? Because mm. someone has done the job. Yeah. So in order for us to, you know, it's to have some sort of awareness to know, okay, I know where my food is coming from. I know what's in my food. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful to some farmer somewhere yeah. who brought this food to mm -hmm. my table. It's not, we know it's a human requirement, mm -hmm. but someone else puts in that task. Okay. We need to change our perception of what agriculture is. It's not a, de it, it, every job comes with some sort of risk mm -hmm. or difficulty, but it's part of the journey, it's okay. part of the process. Mm -hmm. So we need to change our mindsets to know this is an essential, right. agriculture is essential mm -hmm for the survival of the human race. Mm. It is not designated to a certain type of people. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. <laughs> right. And, and what is it with you Nigerians? You <laughs> like our snails so much because I keep getting Nigerians always. And you know, I like your AA. I want your, what is it with our snail? Is it the same thing you have there? It's the same thing, but to be honest, I grew up eating snails. Okay. Um, I'm from the Southern region of Nigeria, right. like I mentioned. Right. I think what Ghana has done differently or precisely mr felix uh -huh. 
is he has been able to commercialize it and he's showing people the right way to do it. Okay. So I think that is why people mm. are obsessed. I think when I'm while I'm here, I will mm -hmm. try out the Ghanaian snail mm -hmm. to see if there's any difference okay. in terms of taste right. or the size. Right. But I feel, you know, Ghana has, Mr. Felix has put Ghana on the map in terms mm. of snail farming. I'm very sure, like mm. you said, he gets multitudes of calls from around Felix, the world. Felix, come and join us globally, wanting to do business with you or wanting you to come and install uh, the greenhouse for them. But there are people who also say, uh, that's a cliche in all that you're saying. How do you diffuse that allegation? And what do you have to tell clients to build their confidence when it comes to what you're doing in the snail sector? Okay, I think uh, what I would say is that sometimes they put in uh, the, the, the evidence mm -hmm. is in mm -hmm. eating. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So we have been tried and tested by entities like British Council, mm -hmm. DIZ, who has put us through a whole lot of tests and rigors. We've gotten about $250,000 in funding. Mm. All these agencies have, quote unquote, even they are even espionage. They have mm. even secret agents and all that. They have done all the research. Mm. They know that this works. And we are not the hash hash cover it up type. That's okay. why we still continue to win a lot of awards mm. and tell people when you come in here, mm -hmm. it is free. Mm. We've had even competitors come in here. We know mm. who they are, mm. but we still tell them everything because it is not us. It is the snail ecosystem mm -hmm. we are trying to build. Mm -hmm. If he is able to have a breakthrough and then say that, oh, because I did this, now my snails can multiply mm -hmm. twice, mm -hmm. it's a plus for us. Mm -hmm. But we, like every other African school, they say, cover your work. Mm -hmm. Don't let people steal from <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, okay. outside Ghana, they say, collaborate, yes. okay. pair up, team, do this. And we are always covering our work. So probably it's even wrong what you write if mm -hmm. someone comes mm -hmm. to your mm -hmm. attention. Just now we had a, an interactive conversation and they've given us a lot of ideas mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Because two heads are better than, than one. Of course. Yeah, of so course. I tell people, mm -hmm. we are not claiming. Mm -hmm. The good thing is that everything we sort of say mm -hmm. is years of experience that the old farmers mm -hmm. had. Mm -hmm. had so on. they are telling you, they are, we are not as trisolists telling you that snails lay more than 100 plus okay. in the wild. Right. But we all know mm -hmm. our forefathers knew this and still snails were in existence mm -hmm. when we even came. Okay. So we always tell people, it's not us saying or us saying that greenhouses are good, this mm -hmm. or that, because it's an enclosed system. It doesn't allow houseflies, it doesn't allow insects in there. Okay. What does it do? It means... If you, even as a human being, mm -hmm. you don't have flies and mm -hmm. anything worrying you and you're in a good enclosure, mm -hmm. you grow better. Okay. Um, there's one thing real quick. I'll let you go because we are almost done. Mm -hmm. But the marketing, the marketing demand for snail, yes. is it available? Because one concern that clients would always raise is, and you know, if I'm investing 52000 into a structure, mm -hmm. it's a complete package though. But how assured I'm, I, I am that I'm going to get people to buy from me? How about that? How do we explore the market? Okay. Which way do I, or which direction do I look if I'm hoping to go into snail farming? Okay. So I'll tell people, even the informal market, you yourself go to three restaurants, tell them you are buying snails. They will either tell you they don't have in stock, meaning that's an available market you mm. could go into. Two, it is there, but it is too expensive. Okay. That means it is also another available market you could go into. Because if someone is buying a snail, for 50 CDs and reselling mm. for 100 CDs. Mm. And you can tell them that I can get you to you at 30 CDs. Mm. You have a ready market mm. there. So I tell people, not us only saying that again, because the ones we exported to UK, they bought it in a day, gave us all back the money, mm -hmm. but how to even do another consignment. I'll show you the boxes we have made. Okay. There, sitting. We don't have snails. So you enough. can export. Yes. We what export is happening? Where are the snails going? <laughs> snail, where are you? It's because of where are the one, snails? One, the right. sand weaning. People uh -huh. are weaning sand in the very remote areas in the forest. The ones we use for building. Mm -hmm. Galamse, mm -hmm. one corporate. Mm -hmm. Now the farmers themselves are corporate because they spray pesticides, weedy sites and all that. And some of them are written in Chinese. Okay. Sometimes they say, take you don't a understand. Yes. Take five milliliters. And that they, is the they cap. They spray a lot and more than. The former look at it. Pours everything in there mm. and expect. And the whole place is contaminated. And, and sometimes, yeah. Sometimes the the plants will come again, uh, and when it rains, mm -hmm. it reactivates mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Most of these are so potent that when it comes into contact with water. It goes back again and so these are powerful. killing the snails and driving them far now, far away and also contaminating the okay. soil stinks and we are doing a lot of things that are hurting 
and we are expanding rapidly expanding mm -hmm. now every time we want mm -hmm. to do farming mm -hmm. because we don't want to do a lot of uh fertilizer and mm -hmm. all that we mm -hmm. clear new forests felix there is this huge argument i keep saying i'm ending but you know and you know <laughs> there's this huge argument Ghana doesn't think africa doesn't need greenhouse africa doesn't need greenhouse but here's the case that these nails are being driven away because of these pesticides. Mm -hmm. There's um, a lot of deforestation and many other things. So how then do we have our snails if we don't have the structure? How do you battle okay. or how do you respond to this argument that we don't need greenhouse? It's a, it's a good argument. Like I said, everything is dependent on the client, one. And then the factors involved. Right. So if you are living in a very hot climate, you don't need a white net in-house oh, okay so the mistake we do is that we adopt technology mm -hmm. fully okay don't cut it or break it up and no let it practices. suit yeah. the african environment okay. imagine the white people have snow like sometimes three months four months mm -hmm. sometimes some people don't even see the sunlight for almost two months so they need their white greenhouses to generate heat. Okay. Here we have too much heat, Excel and you can go and purchase a whole greenhouse from China. Right. That's why we build everything in here. Yeah. Okay. We build it in here in right. Ghana, mm -hmm. so we know that the the snail greenhouse, the net, yes. is able to take up to about uh, uh it, it reduces the sun's intensity uh -huh. up to about forty percent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the forty percent is making sure that uh the greenhouses everything grows well and the snails don't get too much sunlight. Mm. Okay. One awesome thing with this black net is uh -huh. that. A client is now using it to grow only cocoa yam. Which we did She's not sending know before. It. Yes, we didn't even know. She okay. just said she wanted to export cocoa yam. Uh -huh. But when she does it outside, because the sun is too hot, you go and they are drooping. Mm. Okay. They have done this in yeah, the sunlight. Yeah, yeah. The but leaves are falling she off. Use this, She's they able, were able to grow. To increase one, the span. Okay. And two, okay. they were also able to make sure that it grows faster. The ones we planted here are less than a week we transplanted. And they are so good. Oh, okay. So at the end of the day, we are saying that one, there are other things we can do with the same greenhouse. Right, not oh, necessarily right. exactly. snail. Black net yeah. doesn't mean that it's the same white net that is going to burn all yeah. the plants. So your question's answered. Mm. It has to be the material, you know, that you're using for your greenhouse. Mm. But this is very necessary. Looking at the pace which snails are running mm. and the demand keeps demand. growing yeah. every day. We have no option than to find these environments to grow our snail. So we are done. Thank you so much for welcoming us. Don't run away, don't run away. <laughs> um, so Sharon, any message for people who are watching you and also have plans of coming, but they are skeptical, <laughs> you know, should I come, should I not come? And the reception that um, you was... received from Trisolus. And not just Trisolus, from Ayonam. Mm -hmm. Like we were having a different conversation. Mm -hmm. I was already, you know, feeling sad, but <laughs> <laughs> that's the conversation for another day. <laughs> I think with, there are so many people like myself that have watched the Ghanaian farmer mm -hmm. and also found Mr. Felix. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is you will not be disappointed. Everything you're watching on video is the same in real life. Mm -hmm. They're hospitable. Mm -hmm. Every investment you put either with Mr. Felix, mm -hmm. the I, one thing I actually love is his level of transparency. Mm -hmm. He was showing me some um documents and mm -hmm. the plans they have mm -hmm. and i was actually blown away why would you know they normally say africans mm -hmm. we're never straightforward mm -hmm. in the way we do things but in tritolis the level of transparency is something i really admire i don't right. know if it's a ghanaian thing mm -hmm. or but i'm very proud to be associated uh -huh. with mr felix and for future people who mm -hmm. are contemplating on investing or visiting mm -hmm. the doors are open he he's not like he has said I think he's an open book. Yeah. Every he has showed us everything, mm -hmm. how they make the feed, mm -hmm. the next batch of supplies there. Mm -hmm. He has showed us everything. Mm -hmm. So come with an open mind and know that whatever investment you put in, mm -hmm. whatever the returns will be, that's what you will get. Awesome. It's not a scam. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's I have not a scam. My co-presenter. <laughs> <Sharon> here. <laughs> <laughs> all right so thank you so much for watching please subscribe and share this interview if you want to visit ghana to explore mm -hmm. any part of our agricultural sector your lady here thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much so i'll see you on the flip side but let's take you on a round mm -hmm. um a small tour mini tour mm -hmm. here in the farm where they are doing some packaging and then we'll call it a day but for now thank you so much for hanging out with us bye bye thank you